code makes the world smaller and our horizons broader. Driving every corner of our global economy is code. In this series, we look under the hood at today's most dynamic open source software with the people behind it. In this episode, we sit down with two innovative teams who are building on HoloLens. One is transforming the world of medicine, and the other is changing the way we visualize the complex industries of oil and gas. We take a dive into gaming and virtual reality with a look at the code behind the Oculus Rift and see what's in store for the future of mixed reality. Now we want to get into the UI aspect, and one of the great conversations that's going on right now is new UI paradigms, really, or interaction models. And in this case, sort of virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, um, that's the conversation we want to have. And so first off, let's do some introductions and a little background. So I'm Sylvain Enduro, I'm the founder of Visua, uh, with my partner, Ed. I'm uh, Ed Ventura, I'm the uh, president and co-founder of Visua. My name is Jeff Sorensen. I'm the president and CEO of Terra Recon, where we're working with Visua uh, with very detailed uh, image renderings that we can put within the HoloLens. And there's much, much more to come in terms of what we can do with measurements and with pre-surgical planning and even the application of artificial intelligence in medicine. And a matter of fact, we had an opportunity to take a look at, uh, at Visua. Why don't we take a look? What we're going to show you today is Visual uh, technology, and what we do is we do high-speed computing on Azure GPU. We're going to stream data to your HoloLens, and you're going to be able to manipulate in real time without any computing power on the HoloLens itself. Awesome. Looking yes. forward to that. Let's take a look. The heart that uh, Sylvain is bringing up now is, is very important as a practical use today. Surgical planning is an option. Also, doctor-patient communication is important. Uh, patients don't understand what they're actually seeing from a general scan. So in this particular case, we've taken a CT scan, put it all together, slices of bread, forming a loaf of bread. And in what, we, what we can do is, is show the individual, the patient, the colleague, anywhere around the world and talk about the same object in real time. No, it's cool. We can we can collaborate. You know, if, if either one of us was a, a doctor, you know, you can see this whole thing here, which is really cool. Yeah, if Sylvain just kind of steps in, yeah. he can actually move into the heart itself. What's important is not just seeing the surface of the heart. Right. I think that looks great. Uh, it's really more important to see the detail of the heart on the inside. We don't lose any information that comes from the scan itself. Yeah. That's really the important. Basically, what you see is what you get. Anything off the scans is going to be captured in, in this particular uh, stream. It's pretty incredible because the whole notion of sort of the holographic 3D image to start with is impressive, but then the ability for both of us to see it at the same time and collaborate, that's a, it's super unique. And you, you, know, you can't think of a better uh, case study than medicine. Well, and HoloLens as a client and Azure GPU are really going to be key for us. Thanks so much. Appreciate you making the time. Thank you thanks very much. Yeah, here. thanks a lot. I love that. Thanks for uh, spending the time with us on that. And, and speaking of cool technologies and, and demos, let's uh, continue around the table. Yeah, I mean, uh, my name is Amish Savarwal. I'm the Executive Vice President for the Americas for Aviva. Aviva is an engineering information management software company that back in the 70s had first brought 3D visualization to the complex processing industries like oil and gas, power, and petrochemicals. Uh, since then, we've been uh, bringing this technology to the masses, and this year we're bringing in mixed reality with HoloLens, and take a look at our uh, demo uh, right now. So last year, on stage at Build, we showed on a Surface Hub an Aviva mock-up of an oil platform. We did, yes. Super cool. Sounds like there's some progress, some new new things. I got a hollow lens in my hand, so what do you got yeah, to show me? Yeah, so today we're going to look at a technology demonstrator. We've taken that oil platform, uh, a smaller version of that, and put it into the hollow lens to show our customers what an immersive experience would look like. So let's put on our lens All and right. take, take a walk through the demo. 
and I see an Aviva board, basically like a drawing board here with so, it. So, yes, you can see it's a full-size A1 drawing, and you can get up very close to it and see, see the intricate details. I can, I can. I can see everything. Very cool. Good way to see uh, full skies drawing 2D information in the HoloLens experience. So yeah. the drawings are an older, antiquated technique for collaboration between engineers and designers. So with the introduction of 3D, uh, we'll click on our 3D button. I just did. It's sort of flowing down. So and we, there it goes. It's coming out of the picture. Great. The head is slick. So now we have CAD data. So the next step in our demo is to um, take this model and, and put it on the floor and, and, and enlarge Yeah, I it. see enlarge 3D, so I'm going to go over here, mm -hmm. enlarge 3D, and it says to look over here, and, and it's now, oh, there it is, look at that. So now that we should see the yeah, model in front yeah, of you. Yeah, I see it. It's coming up from the floor, and it plays a, a, a little construction sequence. Yeah, it, it actually with. grows, and, and it colors in, so I can see the tall piece here, and oh, yeah, this is slick. So we have audio in the yeah. demo as well, so you can hear um, just, just some ambient construction sounds. <laughs> It says follow your gaze. This is, yeah. So this is a one-eighth scale model. Yeah. It's about 10 feet tall, ah, but slick. still lets you fully immerse yourself in the 3D model, walk through it, yep. and, and get up close and personal with, with the intricate details. And it says this guy's little menu here. Yeah, so we have this digital concept of digital asset. So for example, uh, show feed pumps. All right, so show feed pumps. There it goes. And so all the colors have gone off everything but the feed pumps now. So this will show the yep. uh, cert highlight certain parts of the model. Yeah, the pump's over here. There we go. Okay, yep. There they are, right there. And you can see all the, the piping they're connected to and they, they come around the other side. Slick, all right. So next step in the model is uh, over by the uh, easel, you see a... I see a human. Yes. Uh, our factory worker. Locate our friendly plant worker next to the drawing board. Air tap him, okay? So we're gonna air tap and place him in the model. Okay. So this, in our industry, we do ergonomic checks when we design 3D plant systems. So we put a scale man in the model. To there see, he is. <laughs> yeah, see if he can reach valves. Well, right, right, right. So next or we're gonna, we're gonna oh, take the model full scale. Okay. So we're at one-eighth scale now, so. So let me back up out here so I give it some room. I see on the right here it says full scale. Yes. So let me go. There we go. So, so now I'm on the floor of the plant. There's my worker. My worker's over there. Uh, we're about the same height. Yeah, that is cool. So the, this thing is now all over the room. There's the feed pumps. I can see those over there now. Um, so the model's bigger than the room. So navigating yeah. through the model, we've had to introduce a teleporting capability. So you can kind of jump and teleport. The yeah, it says, uh, say, enable teleport. So I'm going to enable teleport. And then use your gaze to Okay, to I see it. Yep. I want to go. Spot. I want to go up on the top of these ladder up here. Oh, slick. So now I'm on top here, and now I can look down. Oh yeah. Wow, well, it's So let's this experience. Uh -huh, that goes all the way through the roof. I want to go all the way up there. <laughs> now I'm basically on top of the world. Holy crud. You I can see the I can see the man down there. Yes. That is really cool. So the last piece is uh, yep. we've got uh, 3D sounds. We have spatial sounds in our experience. Okay. So we, we've uh, this is kind of a live digital yep. asset. So um, it says follow the sound to the faulty pump. Yeah. So let's teleport down, back down to the ground floor. Okay. I'm gonna go right next to the man. There we are, brothers and, in arms. And the challenge is to find the pump that's that's sounding like it's about to fail. So there's a 3D spatial sound yep. put into the system. Yeah. So as you walk through the 3D environment, the sound fall off increases or. or decreases, yep. and there's a pump that's starting to fail. Yep. Once you find that, you click on it. It should be on the very corner or the very edge of the 3D model. Yeah. All right, we'll shut the pump down. So as a worker now, I've figured that out. Yeah, so we can get 2D information into to this uh, HoloLens mixed reality world, show uh, maintenance procedures, troubleshooting procedures right there in, in the environment itself. Slick. I mean, compare, you know, last year I thought it was pretty cool to, to you know, blow it up on the surface up. It's a whole nother world to be able to step into the model. It is. Teleport around, put a human in it, put yourself in it. It's, I'll tell you what, I, I can't imagine there's anybody you work with who doesn't try this out and go, holy crud. Yeah, all the customers that we show this to are, are super excited about it and, and are coming up, coming up with ways to use it. Uh, with, with their own uh, awesome. companies. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. I'm going to pull this off now and get out of the plant. That was incredible. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, Appreciate thank you it. so much. Thanks for making the time and thanks for the incredible progress. You're Love welcome. It. Appreciate Love it. it. You can just sort of see the, the movement forward in terms of the technology and the capability and bring it to life uh, in true uh, mixed reality fashion.
And one of the things that's the most interesting in this space is the applicability of sort of the VR mixed reality to almost any segment, whether it's healthcare or sort of uh, large physical structures, gaming if we go back in time and all the other pieces that go with it. So we'd love to get a little bit of background on sort of your, um, both sort of the complexity of what you're working on and sort of the focus, as well as sort of just how we got going here. No, absolutely. What Visua does is we provide a streaming platform that takes big data and moves it to very simple devices such as a, a mobile phone, a Surface tablet, today HoloLens. With our partner Terra Recon, one of their problems is they have big DICOM files, medical file CT, MRI, a 3D ultrasound, but they're really working in a confined space. There's no opportunity for them to share this data. In critical situations where you need collaboration right away, how do you really solve that problem? We actually solve that problem by allowing all the computing to be done on Azure GPU, streamed from one partner. They can bookmark uh, the image, email it uh, to their colleague, and they can manipulate it from wherever they are in anywhere in the world. It's very complex, but, but to the consumer, it's very, very easy. If you looked at the, um, the value of a radiologist's time or of a surgeon's time, the entire viewing experience, all the data storage, all the compute expense, everything in the end-to-end -end image lifecycle chain could be paid for by saving the image intensive specialist, the radiologist or the cardiologist, 15 seconds of time. And so I think that is the, the potential uh, for disruption in this business is that it isn't about taking the same kinds of viewers and making them better than they were before. It's about using artificial intelligence and using very lightweight viewers and powerful compute systems in order to automate nine out of 10 steps. And yeah. that will fundamentally change the market. It's yeah. pretty interesting to see this combination of, of various different kinds of clients ranging from the simple <laughs> phone all the way up to mixed reality kinds of devices and HoloLens. Combining that with what's going on in the cloud really seems to unlock many different aspects of the business. Now, you're seeing the same thing in the oil and gas industry and many others. Yeah, and the, yeah, in the complex industry, we have the same challenges around uh, collaboration. And I, I'll rewind. I'm an engineer by trade. And back in the day, we all used to get together on a drafting table, and we'd all look at the lines and circles and make decisions right away. You fast forward that 20 years later, we have disparate database systems that all of our suppliers continually to own. The owner has a different system. And if there's a way for us to take that drafting table and essentially put it in the cloud where we can collaborate and work together and then share that information and streamline it like using great technology like you guys down to various devices to allow engineers that are maintenance and operation as well as uh, safety engineers to actually collaborate and look at that data is a huge step forward. These are pretty sophisticated, complex models that we're looking at, whether it be in oil and gas, medical, mm -hmm. streaming them from the cloud. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the things that it's been great about the Babylon project is just making 3D so accessible. In fact, we did a little bit of work on that. Why don't we take a look at that? What is Babylon.js? What do people use it for? So Babylon.js is a free and open source uh, 3D engine running on every WebGL platforms, and it's to build games or 3D experiments in the browser. Nice. You're on version three. What's in version three? A lot of stuff, but mainly a new playground. We're currently improving a lot of performance, and we're working on VR. So let's take a look at a couple of those things. So I've been playing with a playground. The whole thing's written in TypeScript. Yes. So you get statement completion, and you can see all the information about the calls. I mean, check this out, right? Sphere dot position. I get all of that stuff, and I could say, say, plus equals one. And if I just hit run, like I can move this stuff around. It's so cool to just be able to use this freeform JavaScript editor with all the statement completion because of that TypeScript work. Yeah, so. the idea is to let people playing with the API rather than directly learning by reading the doc, which is really cool. Yeah, now if I do window.add event listener, and we just do a quick event listener for, say, the, the key down event. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quick Lambda function in here, which we can do now, right? This is a yes. cool thing about the browsers. Let's just now do that same move. We'll do the sphere.position.x plus equals. Should be perfect. Like that will 
have me actually doing a kind of interactive system here. So the next big thing that you said was this VR stuff. And yes, and also the beauty of, well, JavaScript and what working is working cross platform and browser. there. So maybe let's check the other part in, in a special bill of Chromium. So here's a scene. This is just like kind of what we built before, maybe a little bit cooler. Yeah. What would it take to add VR to this? Well, you see currently we're using a specific camera, which is a universal one to be able yep. to move using the keyboard, gamepad, whatever. We just need to switch this line, and maybe we should have a look to the documentation to check if we are okay, so here's, good enough here's documentation. Here's the Babylon documentation. You have these overviews. Mm -hmm. And what we want using the VR camera? Exactly, let's check. OK. Out. The simplicity of Babylon is to switch the behavior just one line of code. So let's copy paste this line of code. And really, this is all I'm going to need to change to get VR going here? All right, let's check that together. <laughs> OK, so here, I'll just comment this line out so we can kind of compare. And look at that. So instead of the universal camera, we're you doing the web VR directly. camera. Yeah. You could have used IntelliSense and just done switched. it. OK, so if I run this, what do we get? You see, we've got a double run ring because it's VR. And now maybe you want to test that inside the headset. This is the Oculus Rift. Oh, this and, is the Rift. And okay. the HTC Vive is also supported by Babylon GS. We are currently supporting any kind of devices. OK. Wow. Ah, oh, so very nice. Holy cow, you can see the whole scene. Very nice. It's super smooth. Now, I see down here some controllers yes. sitting on the table. What would it take to add interaction? So by default, in Babylon, you have the controller being displayed, but we don't have a default behavior yet. OK, so you can see the controllers, but if you want to do something, you're you need to, some to write some yep. code. You can see that we are sending a ray, and this ray That's is. That's this Babylon ray helper you're sending on. Yes, this is a single line of code, and when you're moving the controller, you can see that it's moving uh, the ray. That's it's, super cool. You can select an object like that, like the cube, it's yep. sending the colors. And you can see it's currently uh, drawing something on the floor. The idea is when you put the headset, be able to, um, to, to, to select something and then to jump directly there. Ah, so we just did kind of a teleportation. Yeah. This is move, teleport, yes. selector two. Exactly. So if it's the ground, we jump to it. Otherwise, we can go select yes, objects. Then it gives you, you a need cool to way. Which object you want to interact with and which kind of behavior you like to code. And this is the role of the developer to do whatever you want. Cool. So. I, the thing that's amazing about this is just how easy it is to put together very sophisticated kind of interactions and all open source. Yes, it's all open source. So if people want to contribute and say that our current VR implementation is maybe not good enough, we're really listening to the community to adapt the code itself. And people, most of the time, this is the beauty of open source, contribute to the code. Awesome. Thank you. Many of the problems that we're off tackling now are these very deep industrial kinds of problems where we're looking at a digital replica of things that are in the physical world. Our teams have been working together um, to solve these kinds of problems. Well, I, I got a couple experience. I was talking to our CTO and our development group, and they wanted to give a shout out to the developer experience organization, especially around HoloLens. Uh, they've been working tirelessly, integrating, uh, having uh, phone conversations in the middle of the night, because we're in Cambridge in the UK. Um, having hackathons, I guess, is what, I don't know what that actually means, but we appreciate and thank you for all your support. But we got a lot of work to do still. Uh, two questions in one, which is, uh, you know, look forward a little bit. What do you see in the next, you know, year, two, three as you're working on this? And then what are some of the challenges we collectively still have to overcome? Well, I think, I think it kind of going back to how we're really working together, uh, any kind of information that's coming out, anything that's coming out of uh, Microsoft that kind of helps us build for the, the next version, you know, of, of any kind of technology that you have is, is really important. We've been utilizing our relationship with Microsoft to really push the boundaries on GPU computing. We're in 85 or so of the top 100 hospitals, so our customers are generally large customers, and most of them are, of course, utilizing Microsoft products. Inside of our system, we had an ASIC-based board, a custom board that we built, and we just moved off of that board to do huge amounts of rendering. It was just simply never possible before GPU-based computing came uh, not even of age, but really just recently was capable. And now Microsoft, they understand HIPAA security, and at the same time, they were a first mover into GPU computing. I think maybe a metaphor, when I was a, my, my kids use uh, Minecraft 
right? And they're, they're building things uh, together as teams. Uh, so in, in the industrial world, uh, it's the same complexity. We have engineers that are spread out all over the world that are designing complex assets. We've kind of been able to solve that with sharing data, but we haven't been able to solve that in the Minecraft sense where we're looking at the same 3D object and working on it collaboratively together. So I think that's something that I'm looking that's forward very to powerful. for oh, yeah. you guys we, to help we, us we, with. So we have that today. So it was one of the first things that we need because a surgeon, mm. he can't have an lens uh, alone. Yeah. So many surgeons have to have the same environment. Mm. So today we are building the same scene at the same time. And uh, the beauty of the uh, GPU Azure, it's you can bring all the files in uh, the VRAM and you can share all the view for everyone. Right. Sharing content, I agree. But now like multidiscipline teams like yeah. process mechanical, instrumentation, yeah. electrical, different engineering disciplines yeah. where they're on the same object yeah. but they're doing their own thing. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, Rather that's, than you, I don't have to. I just have to see what that other guy's doing, but I'm doing my own work. This is sort of a really phenomenal kind of conversation. If you think about what's going on in terms of you know CPU and GPU, just the compute power in the cloud, that next level of that AI capability, and then if we take Hololens, sort of on the front end, this mixed reality, that ability to bring it to life in 3D models, um, the ability to collaborate together, it's sort of things that people hadn't thought about. It's that next generation in, in many ways where. You know, we think about gaming and the fun aspect of this. The truth is these complex business processes and models and collaborating there could be the difference between life and death. Yeah. Could be yeah. sort of a, a change in the way um, energy is driven or, or created. I mean, there's just such possibility. So we want to thank you for your time and for your partnership. And uh, we appreciate you making it today. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, thank you. On the next episode of Decoded, we invite a new set of thought leaders to the roundtable to hear firsthand about what's new, what's being built, and what's next for the future of modern app development.